Hello children, how are you all? I hope you are all doing good. Welcome to another session of digital classes. Metals means what children? Metals are hard solid substances which are not found in the free states except of some metals like gold and silver. Most of the metals are found in the earth's crust combined with other impurities. So, they are called as minerals and we extract metals from ores because ores are the minerals from which you can extract the metals profitably. So, extraction of metals mainly has three stages to be followed children. The first stage is concentration or dressing of ore and the second stage is extraction of crude metal and the third stage is refining of metal. Concentration of ore means the process of removing impurities is called as dressing or dressing or concentration of minerals. Now, this is the way you are taking, you are selecting a particular ore, you are putting it into a vibrating feeder. By using jaw crusher, you are crushing it into smaller pieces. You are grinding the ore into smaller pieces by using a ball mill. And then concentration of ore takes place by using a magnetic separator. Now, children, this is the way you are extracting copper metal from its respective ore. So, the impurities like sand and clay which are present along with the metal are called as gang. Children, what is gang? As I told you, the ore is obtained from the earth's crust. So, it is combined with sand and other impurities. So, during the concentration of ore, we are cleaning the ore. After crushing it, we are dressing the ore. We call it an ore dressing. So, what are the impurities which you are removing? You are separating from the pure ore. These impurities are called as gang. So, sand and clay are removed from the ore. That impurity is called as gang. So, if you look at this picture, sand and soil can be clearly seen and that sand and soil is nothing but the impurity present along with the ore that is called as gang. Now, let us see what is reduction of ores by more reactive metals. Children, this is called as a thermite process. Thermite process involves the reaction of metal oxides with aluminum. So, children, when highly reactive metals such as sodium, calcium, aluminum are used as reducing agent, they displace metals of lower reactivity. Children, as high reactive metals are taking the place of low reactive metals, then we call this process, process as thermite process. So, here displacement reaction takes place. So, more reactive aluminum takes the place of less reactive iron from iron oxide. Children, this is not balanced. This is only to show that aluminum displaces iron from iron oxide. This type of reaction is called as displacement reaction. So, in thermite process, we can see displacement reactions which are highly exothermic. So, the amount of heat which is evolved is so large that the metals which are extracted will get converted to liquid state. So, whatever the metal is extracted, it comes out as molten state. For example, titanium chloride if you are taking, it reacts with magnesium to liberate magnesium chloride. So, thus we have removed the chlorine impurity as magnesium chloride and the pure titanium metal is extracted in this process. So, here what we have done? Displacement reaction takes place. More reactive magnesium displaces less reactive titanium and thus metal titanium is extracted from the ore titanium chloride. So, the heat which is liberated is so high that you can see that the metal which is coming out comes out in the form of molten state. So, the reaction of iron oxide also if you can see the more reactive aluminum will displace less reactive iron from iron oxide. Children, this process is uh, so exothermic that it liberates so much amount of heat that it will even melt the iron which is getting extracted from the ore. So, mainly iron oxide with aluminum produces molten iron. This iron is used in iron railings of railway tracks or cracked machine parts. Now, this reaction is known as thermite process. In this reaction, you can see iron oxide when reacts with aluminum, aluminum oxide is formed liberating the molten iron 
along with a lot of heat enormous amount of heat which can even melt the iron. So, the iron is extracted in the molten state the same way in thermite process you can also reduce chromium oxide you can extract chromium from chromium oxide ore with the help of aluminum more reactive metal is displacing the less reactive chromium metal. Now, in this process we can see the formation of aluminum oxide and a pure chromium metal is extracted with the enormous amount of heat. So, you can see from this picture that in thermite process lot of heat is liberated which can even melt the solid metal thus the metals which are extracted are collected in the form of molten state. So, children let us come to the third type extraction of metals at the bottom of activity series that means least reactive metals like iron gold and mercury. Children mostly gold is uh, found in the form of pure state only. So, here we will be seeing the re uh, less reactive metals like iron and less reactive metals like mercury and silver. Metals at the bottom of the reactivity series are often found in the free state like gold. The reactivity with other atoms is very low. The oxides of these metals can be reduced by metals by heat alone and sometimes by displacement from their aqueous solution. So, how are you going to remove the impurities children as these metals are less reactive then they if they combine with the oxygen they form metal oxides. Now, they can be easily reduced by heat itself and even by displacement reactions also. So, if you take cinnabar mercury sulphide which is an ore of mercury and if it is heated in air it is first converted into metal oxide that is mercuric oxide. Now, this mercuric oxide can be reduced to mercury on further heating. So, if you are taking cinnabar mercuric sulphide when it reacts with oxygen when it is burnt in excess amount of oxygen then it forms mercuric oxide. Now, this is sulphur dioxide which is formed and here sulphur is impurity which is removed in this process. Now, the mercuric oxide which is formed gets reduced into mercury and oxygen. Now, even displacement reaction can be used here children. Now, if you take uh, uh, displacement reaction let us see one example here we have taken silver this is an ore of silver silver sulphide you can also call argentus sulphide. Now, if it is dissolved in potassium cyanide solution then we get a mixture called as a complex structure called as dicyano argentate. Now, this is an ion now the sulphur ions have come out. So, from silver sulphide the sulphide ions have been separated. Now, how will you extract the silver from this dicyano argentate ion with the help of more reactive zinc ions. Now, zinc if it is taken and mixed with this then you can see that zinc will displace silver to separate silver in the form of solid. Now, the new compound which is formed is called as zinc cyanate. Now, children you understood that first we have taken an ore of silver with an impurity of sulphur we have dissolved it in potassium cyanide solution and thus we get a new complex ion that is sil silver dicyano argentate ions along with the sulphide ions. Now, this dicyano argentate ion when it is re when it reacts with zinc then we can see zinc cyanate ions thus here zinc metal has displaced the less reactive silver ions. So, from these ions silver is precipitated by treating with zinc dust powder. Now, let us see purification of the crude metal. So, with the help of reduction, roasting, calcination and displacement and electrolysis reaction after these many processes we have extracted metals. Now, what is the next step we have to go the next step is purification of the metal which is extracted from the respective ores. Now, in this process children the metal obtained by the reduction of ore is usually contaminated like you can have unchanged ore which has not uh, been uh, separated from the impurities and you can also find other metals also and you can also find other non metals also. So, children you can separate other impurities from the crude metal. For example, let us see blister copper. 
Now the copper obtained from it is a sulphide ore, a compound of copper ion pyrite. This is the ore children, in this you can find copper, iron and sulphur. Here mainly this is a copper ore, the impurities present here are children, iron and sulphur. So it contains some copper sulphide, iron and sulphur. So we have to separate iron and sulphur. So in this process you can adopt suitable methods including electrolysis. The process of obtaining pure metal from the impure metal is called as refining of the metal. So what is refining of metal children? It is a process of obtaining pure metal from the impure metal. So let us see what are the main steps involved here. The refining of metal involves several types of processes. They are distillation, polling, liquidation and electrolysis. Let us see what is distillation. Children, the process that has adopted for purification of given metal depends on the nature of metal and its impurities, is not it children? So mainly we have seen that there are different types of methods we have adopted that means it depends upon the type of metal and its type of reactivity and the type of impurity present in the ores along with the metals. So it the process of refining also depends upon the type of the ore. The first process here in the refining is distillation. Distillation means what children? Here in this method we uh, mainly follow for low boiling metals like zinc and mercury. They have low boiling points. So the high boiling impurities can be separated by a method called as distillation. The extracted metal in the molten state is distilled to obtain pure metal as distillate. So what are we doing here children? In this method is very useful for purification of low boiling metals like zinc and mercury. Now if it contains impurities with high boiling metals you can easily separate them. So the extracted metal can be separated in the molten state. So children in this way you can separate low uh, boiling point impurities from and high boiling point impurities. Now the next method here is polling. The molten metal is stirred with logs of green wood. So you are taking the molten metal in a big container and you are mixing it with stirring it with logs of green wood. The impurities are removed either as gases or they get oxidized and form a scum, a slag which is removed from the molten metal. Now blister copper is also extracted by this method only. The reducing gases evolved from the wood prevent the oxidation of sulphur. So the, the gases which are getting separated they will not allow the copper to react with the oxygen. So in this way children you are taking the molten metal in a container, you are taking a green wood or a bamboo and continuously if you are stirring it whatever the impurities are there they can be removed as a slag or scum and the molten metal is separated from the impurities. Now the next uh, uh, method which can be used for refining the metals are liquidation. Now in this like method children a low melting metal like tin can be made to flow on a slopey surface to separate it from high melting impurities. So here you are using liquidation method mainly for separating low melting metals like tin. So here mainly it is very light and it has a very less melting point so it gets separated from the uh, metals which have high melting points. So other impurities also which have high melting point can be separated by this liquidation method. Now electrolytic refining, in this method children the impure metal is made to act as anode and a strip of the same metal in pure form is used as a cathode. Thus what happens in electrolytic refining children? If you are taking the same metal in the pure form as cathode, whatever the metal is present in the electrolyte gets deposited on the cathode. Thus you can get a pure cathode and a pure metal which is getting deposited on the cathode. So this is liquidation children, here the impurities with high melting point will get separated and the pure metal with less melting point will get collected in the molten state. So my impurities are settling back and the pure metal is getting collected in the container. Now let us see what is electrolytic refining. As we discussed earlier children, we can use electrolysis uh, for refining the metals. 
Now, the pure metal is extracted by using electrolytic refining if it is a metal which is uh, present along with the other impurities. So, the molten metal is collected in a electrolytic container, now electrolytic cell and then we add soluble salts to it along with some other metals. Now, the required metal gets deposited on the cathode. So, the cathode what you are taking should be made up of the same metal and the anode should be made up of the impurity metal present in the electrolyte. And then what happens at anode? At anode the other impurity metals will get separated and at cathode the pure metal what you want to collect will get deposited on the cathode. In this way, you can separate pure metal by a process called as electrolysis. So, this is the way impurities are collected at the bottom of the electrolytic cell. So, here we have taken the molten metal along with the impurities, you can add some salts like we have added uh, in this copper sulphate solution we have added. Now, this is the uh, impure copper as anode and this is the pure copper as anode and when electricity is passed, then the pure copper will get selected. Uh, collected on the cathode and the other impurities will get collected at the bottom of the electrolytic cell. So, this is the way electrolytic refining of copper can be done from copper sulphate solution. We use this electrolytic method to refine copper, impure copper is taken as anode and the pure copper strips are taken as cathode. The electrolyte is the acidified solution of copper sulphate. So, acidified means you need to add hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid or you can add even some other salts to make copper sulphate more uh, good conductor of electricity. So, children if you look at this picture, uh, here copper metals are getting deposited at the cathode and the impurities are getting separated at anode and you can see the impurities which are getting collected under the anode is called as anode mud which can be separated from the pure copper metals. So, as a result of electrolysis copper in pure form is transferred from anode to cathode. So, copper it splits into copper ions liberating two electrons the same way again pure copper ions they react with electrons to form copper metal. This copper metal is getting deposited at the cathode. So, children copper cathode is taken as negative electrode and the impure copper anode is taken all the pure copper ions will get deposited at cathode only. In this way electrolysis can be used for refining the copper by method called as electrolytic refining. So, the soluble impurities go into the solution and the insoluble impurities they are collected at the bottom which is called as anode mud which contains antimony, selenium, tellurium, silver, gold and platinum etcetera which were present already in the ore of copper which is called as a blister copper. And if you want to recover this, this is actually very costly. So, it can even meet the cost of refining. So, it is better that we concentrate only on the metal what we have refined. So, children the impurities anode mud can be seen in this picture. So, in this way anode mud also contains different metals which were present in the um, ore. Now, a few important processes let us just uh, see the definitions children smelting. Now, smelting is a pyrochemical process, pyrochemical process means in which heat is involved. In this ore is mixed with flux and fuel and strongly heated. So, smelting is a process children in which ore is mixed with flux and fuel and strongly heated and the heat is so strong that the ore is reduced to metal and in some cases the iron gets collected at the bottom of the furnace in the form of a molten state and this process mainly takes place in the blast furnace. So, ore along with the fuel that is coke and limestone is added and after a chain of reactions you can see the molten metal is getting collected at the bottom of the blast furnace. So, children the impurities can be removed as slag and the molten metal which is uh, uh, purely collected here can be collected from this step. So, smelting children we are removing the impurities called as gang and we are adding flux to form slag. Coke is used as a fuel in this process children and the limestone is used as flux. The smelting is carried out in a specially built furnace called as blast furnace. So, this is a blast furnace children we will be seeing a video for about it. So, in this uh, we can see carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide children iron oxide reacts with carbon monoxide to form iron 
along with carbon dioxide. Here we have added calcium carbonate which gets separated as calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and calcium oxide combines with silica to form calcium silicate. So, calcium oxide is the basic flux, it combines with the acidic gang that is silica to form calcium silicate and this silica when it combines with the iron oxide it forms ferrous silicate a slag which is removed from the blast furnace. So, in this way pure iron gets collected in the molten form. Now, roasting, roasting is also a pyrochemical process children, here roasting is the heating of ore in the presence of oxygen, generally it takes place in the reverberatory furnace. So, zinc sulphide when it combines with oxygen it forms zinc oxide and sulphur dioxide and after reduction of zinc oxide you can see pure zinc can be separated from zinc oxide. Calcination, it is also a pyrochemical process in which heat is evolved. Now, here uh, it, the ore is heated in the absence of air. Now, if you look at this ch equation children, magnesium carbonate if it is heated, carbon dioxide gets separated uh, and magnesium oxide is formed. Calcium carbonate also on heating in the absence of air, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide are formed. Now, this calcium oxide with the, uh, silica it forms calcium silicate. Now, flux is a substance added to the ore to remove the gang. Whatever the gang is, the impurities which are present in the ore can be removed when it combines with the flux. And if the impurity is acidic, you can add silica, it is a basic substance. Children, in this way, if the impurity is basic nature, iron oxide acidic flux like silica is added to the gang. So, iron oxide if it combines with silica, it forms iron silicate. Let us recap what we have studied children. Uh, we have seen the extraction of metal from its ore, it involves three stages, ex concentration, extraction and refining. We have seen the different processes like calcination, roasting and smelting. Children, during calcination we have seen what are the steps involved, Let's write a short notes on calcination and smelting, write the differences between roasting and calcination, what is gang, what is slag. Mention two methods which produces very poor metals and impure metals. So, I hope you have understood the lesson children, please download the worksheets from SCERT website for better learning and good practice. Okay children, I hope you have understood the lesson, let us meet in another interesting session of digital classes, thank you.